Hey guys, in today's micro lecture, we're going to talk about scalp injuries. Now, as a paramedic, you will get called to lots of patients who present with scalp wounds or scalp injuries. Think about the types of situations that occur. You have people who've fallen over accidentally in the home and have sustained a scalp wound. You have people who have been involved in fights, road traffic collisions, and all sorts of other types of situations that you can't even imagine. So the the scalp is a very interesting place to, to injure because it is highly vascular and it's made up of lots of different layers as you can see here. So the, the scalp itself is made up of five different layers. As you can see here, you've got the, the, the outer layer, the periosteum, the bone, and then directly under that, you've got the, the lower levels, but the scalp itself is made up generally of five layers. Now underneath, all of the, the scalp layers is the actual cranium itself or the actual bone uh, this, or the skull. Now directly below this you've got all the different dura mater, pia mater and arachnoid mater or the DAP in that order DAP. Uh, but I'd like to just draw, you a, draw your attention to a couple of things and the first thing is look how thick the skull is. So the skull bone itself is actually pretty dense, pretty thick. And likewise, look how thick the, skull, the, the scalp layers actually are. Now, what that means for you is when you guys are assessing a patient, try not to overestimate, or I suppose even underestimate um, to some extent, the, um, the, how strong the scalp and the, and, the, and the skull actually are. Because sometimes you can go to patients, you can arrive on scene and patients have got huge edematous swellings on their head and, and think to yourself, wow, this really is gonna impact on the brain. Now it may, it may have impacted on the brain, but generally speaking on most occasions, you'll find that there's some kind of damage to the scalp layers, which has which is caused local tissue swelling rather than any serious underlying damage to the brain. So then when we look a little bit further at the, at the layers underneath the skull, below the skull, you've got the dura mater, which is this top one, then the arachnoid mater, and then the pia mater, so DAP, pia mater. So you've got these three layers from the outside, DAP, um, followed very, very quickly um, directly below that is the actual brain itself. And as you can see here, you've got circulation. Now what you'll find in this layer here is the cerebrospinal fluid, which, which actually acts as a shock absorber and nourish, nourishment provider to the brain. Because as you guys will probably have read by now, when you take a direct hit to the head, the brain has some space to be able to move around. And it's the cerebrospinal fluid that allows the brain to actually move in that cranial cavity. But anyway, that's a micro lecture on um, the different layers of the scalp and the, uh, the different um, subarachnoid um, processes. And I hope you've enjoyed this session. And my name's Sam Willis, and I look forward to talking to you again shortly. Take care, guys.